today uh, as the final session. So we've been hearing about the approaches in healthcare and uh, we always like to talk to both sides of the table. So we have on one side, uh, big pharma companies doing a lot of innovation uh, for in different parts of the things. And also on the other side, we have the startups who are making uh, innovation that some of the big pharma companies or healthcare companies haven't touched yet. So Sardar and Berkin, if you can, please. Oh, perfect. I can see both of you right now. Uh, I, I mean, as you know, we have some questions. So I want to go start it like this. And again, like, let me just mention a little bit about Fire Grants for Apps since we've been working it for four years. And this program is designed for mainly healthcare startups, but we also have every tech. We have environment science. And every year we are kind of including uh, other topics which is relevant to healthcare anyways. So we have seen a lot of great startups over there and said that is one of them. So uh, before we begin, I would be really happy if you can just introduce yourself. And Berkin, I will ask my initial questions to Sardar and I will ask a little bit about the program first. So we will follow on your cooperation. So first, let's do the introduction. Welcome Sardar. Let us know who you are and what Albert helped us. Thank you very much, Khan. And thank you for the, this event. It's great to be here. Uh, I am Serdar Gemci, the co-founder of Albert Hat, co-founder and CEO of Albert Hat. Uh, actually, I have a strategy and business development background. Uh, I was in Siemens. Then uh, after four years, I left the Siemens and found Albert Hat in 2018 in UK. Albert is a voice-based health assistant that helps patients to manage their chronic diseases and have online doctor visits. They are just like Siri, they are just talking and they can manage their uh, medications. And we are helping the pharmaceutical companies to increase the medication adherence in their therapeutic areas. Perfect. And happy to have you here. Bakin, would you like to talk about a little bit about yourself? Yeah, of course, I'm going to keep it short. Thanks for having me, first of all, Khan. I do represent Bayer Women's Health here. I'm the BU head uh, responsible for sales and marketing activities, both in Turkey and Iran. Perfect. So let's go into our discussion. So my again, uh, we have a kind of a flow and I want to talk, I mean, ask Sardar first. So why did you apply to this program and why do you think that is it was different than the other programs. So, I mean, personally, I don't want to brag. Uh, I don't want Bayer to brag as well, but as a, I mean, as an alumni of the program, that's the only question that we can ask you. So why did you uh, apply and why do you think that it is different? Yeah, yeah, thank you. The, actually, after we found Albert in 2018 in UK, we returned to, you know, uh, to Turkey. And uh, as a globe, as a, you know, uh, as a, uh, early stage startup, we are always looking for some, um, you know, beneficial programs, the incubation programs or accelerator programs or this kind of corporate powered programs. And we were uh, looking for a, a digital health program in the Turkey. And uh, now after that, we joined a meetup uh, of the, uh, by our G4A. And, uh, you know, we saw the, some startups who, who, is the parts, who are the participants of the previous programs. And we saw the real examples of the collaboration uh, between startups and the corporates. And uh, even in the uh, meetup, I met the seven or eight employee of Bayer and I learned a lot. So it's also, the, I think, the sign of the, uh, you know, the benefits of the program. Then I, we are rejected, by the way. <laughs> Yeah. in our first application then we uh, we insist and uh, apply again in the second year uh, we are accepted into it and it was a great program the it was the only pharma program uh, only startup program of a pharma company in that time um, and to, the different from the you know uh, other programs the management attention is very high i can say it's very important you know, the, because, you know, uh, when the management attention is high, you are, you can reach the decision makers and you can really uh, reach a real, um, uh, you know, result uh, in your discussions. It's very important and it's very comprehensive because, you know, uh, thanks to headquarters, you have a great network, you have great mentors 
uh, you know, to, from the business development to investment and to, from the pharma related topics and to real projects, it was very comprehensive and uh, we learned the, a lot in the program, I can say. Thank you. I mean, um, again, like this program was one of the earliest in pharma, not just in Turkey. So I'm quite happy to be partners with Bayer. And as you mentioned, like we have 20, 30 people from Bayer every year just coming to the initial meetings that they want to be mentors because I see that in the company culture as well. Everybody is interested in the in what we talk about healthcare 2.0, 3.0. And I mean, while they are doing their today's business, they really want to participate in what's coming up. So Berkin, uh, what I'm going to ask you is, uh, why did you decide to work with Albert? So what, what was the case and uh, what do you want to end up with this partnership? So can you talk a little bit about corporate perspective? Sure. Well, um, Serdar already mentioned, you know, he didn't make it in the first one. Uh, um, and uh, we were actually organizing our fourth round uh, of uh, G4A in Turkey last year. And in the third round, when a pandemic was only seen and heard in science fiction movies with IMDb scores less than six, uh, the need was, the sense of urgency was not there. And um, uh, Albert back then was looking for partnership opportunities for the voice-based uh, digital health assistant. Uh, and we actually loved the idea, uh, but the sense of urgency was not that I said, you know, um, when the pandemic kicked in, it was, it has really heavily impacted patient HCP relationships. And uh, many patients hesitated to visit uh, hospitals for non-major healthcare issues. And at the same time, we were observing the global rise of telemedicine and the need of women in Turkey, to be honest. So we wanted to run a telehealth project, helping them, helping women to connect with a healthcare professional, to ask their health related questions or, and overcome any concerns that they might have. So rather than knocking on the door of some private hospital chains or you know, running the project on our own, which was not an option by the way, due to legal limitations, uh, we wanted to partner a startup that would be really both flexible in tailoring a product to our needs. And at the same time, and this is really important, befitting you know to the Bayer image in terms of service quality because you know the Bayer brand is very well known both by the healthcare professionals and also by the patients so service quality was also important and we decided to partner Albert and it seems like it was the right choice yeah <laughs> I mean I'm really glad because uh, this is the biggest question when it comes to corporations right because they always are proud of their brands for of course like you are limited in the world. So you have maybe 500, 200, 2000 brands, which is kind of known by everyone in their industry, plus the rest of the people. So they don't want to work with someone who came up with an idea. And this is what we talk about it. I mean, startups are not people with ideas, but people kind of persevering, the, seeing the problems. And this kind of programs is the best way so you can get the problems directly from the source because you can do a Google search, which is fine, but you cannot get feedbacks from Barkin's side because he's been working in this industry, specific problems, specific limitations. It is really hard to do. So I'm so glad that somehow you end up in this program and we did this POC together. And sometimes it's not the right time, as Sardar mentioned, this, this wasn't their initial application, but we mentioned in Dr. Weiss a presentation. There are some diseases or some kind of uh, structures. We still have some, some time for that. So it doesn't mean that what you are building is worthless. And this is what I want to tell to other startups because there is always a lot of changes. Um, Sardar, I also want to ask you something like uh, what this uh, POC contributed to your company? What did you learn from the process and uh, pieces of advice? for other startups who are dealing with companies like Wire or other similar companies. Like it shouldn't be even pharma. It can be any other big company. So what did you learn in the process? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Actually the Bayer was our first pharma, comp pharma customer. So it was really a big milestone for us. And, you know, um, we met with Bayer uh, in COVID-19 times, and it was in the middle of the COVID-19 actually, it was like the, the May uh, 2020. 
and you know their know-how and their point of view helped us a lot during these crisis time because we we are startup we ha- we don't have too much so much experience in that area so but their experience uh, is very valuable in that kind of uh, in, in doing that kind of incidents actually and we you know uh, we realized the first telehealth project of a pharmace- pharmaceutical company in Turkey and you know it also uh, creates a great uh, brand recognition for Albert Hat. And we also, after that, we got several leads from different customers. Uh, even in Bayer organization, then we also started a great project with Bayer Oncology. Uh, it's also the, uh, it's also, great, also a great pro- uh, project, another uh, Bayer project for us. What piece of advice I can give to other startups? Of course, you should be, uh, be flexible. Because corporates are, you know, sometimes due to regulation, sometimes due to their internal processes, uh, you can, you know, you should change this, uh, some pieces of the product or some pieces of the flow. Uh, you should be flexible and you should under try to understand the, their regulations and try to be proactive. And maybe not just for the healthcare, but the, for the all the. Uh, corporate collaborations, it's very important to understand their decision-making processes. Sometimes you are, you know, you are you lost in the uh, their structure and it's very important to understand their, you know, decision-making, their purchasing methodology, try to, you know, um, don't be late to register as a vendor, to prepare your paperwork to, to register as a vendor. So they are, the, I think, the critical uh, points. I can highlight. I can also say the same thing. Like when you are working with big companies, while they are purchasing your services, they send you a lot of documents, which is quite hefty, but they generally teach you something in the way because there are always something that you never heard of or never considered. I know it's not the funniest thing and business is not that fun. I mean, doing innovation, working on products are much more fun than doing the real business invoicing and the agreements but i mean it teaches us so many things thank you for sharing that um back in uh, on your side i mean again like a lot of corporations wants to work with startups but they have a lot of concerns as well and it happens within the same organizations even. so what were the challenges that you guys actually had in the process well um a lot of challenges Uh, first of all, time pressure. Um, when we first approached Albert, as uh, Sardar mentioned, calendar showed May, I guess. And the government was already planning to reopen the country as of June 1st. So we had to be really quick to deliver our uh, MVP to the users. The second challenge, and this is also a big one, uh, is aligning internal stakeholders on the risks and benefits of such a move. You know, Pharma is, uh, as everyone already said, a well-known uh, industry with its regulations. And this is good so in, in many ways, but aligning your pace with a lean startup uh, was and is a challenge uh, for big companies. Um, however, Bayer is quite willing and open to external innovation, and this makes us a good partner uh, uh, among our likes. So leaving internal challenges aside, I believe we have also some environmental challenges. First of all, the market in Turkey is quite immature, uh, the telemedicine market, and it's also unregulated. So uh, current use of telemedicine by the MOH is limited to CV19 triage. And uh, we hear and know that the social security institution in Turkey has slowly started to show interest into telemedicine to leverage its benefits and uh, also in a way optimize costs for patient care. Um, Another thing is private sector is looking into the subject, but current efforts are a little shy, to be honest. I mean, there are individual efforts that are not really uh, 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 coordinated, um, partially also because of probably the lack of real interest by the insurance companies. I mean, there are some insurance companies pivoting uh, some stuff, but I mean, the the, the whole industry is not really moving into one direction. So there there needs to be further alignment. Um, Another challenge to me is how the market is regulated. So Christian talked about digital therapeutics, right? In Germany, now um, um, I read in a newspaper or so, the digital therapeutics are prescribed and also reimbursed. So right now, the Turkish healthcare system only depends on physical point of sales, which are the independence pharmacies. 
uh, and patient physician relations should be also supported by some complementary services such as e-prescription and online delivery that will also improve and bolster the meaning of uh, uh, telehealth in Turkey. So um, uh, these are the challenges that we face, but um, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we've uh, created a wonderful project and it worked really well. So um, I can only, uh, uh, let's say, recommend to my peers or people from the industry to really put some effort into this uh, because this is an emerging uh, market. I mean, uh, this is always great to be uh, one of the first trying to do something new. And as you said, I'm also going to thank you because uh, innovation is not a monopoly of one company. It doesn't work that way, especially in an industry like healthcare, because you need to have other pharma companies or other healthcare companies to change some regulations because sometimes we are all bound to it. So, but uh, one of being one of the biggest examples of new tries, uh, I think we will talk more about buyers, new POCs with other startups in other different domains. So personally, I want to thank you for everyone in the companies, because at the end of the day, we can say that Bayer, Bayer worked with Albert Health, but uh, I know that it is few people in both sides of the table tried their hardest to make it work because I mean, industry, I mean, institutions are at the end, few people who are willing to change something. So for those people, I also want to thank myself. Um, Sarda, would you like to add anything on the challenges on your side? Because like, it is not always easy. And you mentioned about your learnings as well. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I, I think the Barton explained very well, but maybe I can just add some point of view, the same uh, topics, but the, the other point of view, uh, startup point of view. Uh, it's the, of course, the uh, we are working in very highly regulated market, and it's really hard to finance the long uh, sales cycles for startups. These are the general comments, not just for this, these POCs, but it's about the working with the corporates. Uh, so you should very aware. You should be also very aware of the, uh, this kind of regulations. There are always big challenges. But in this POC, it was vice versa. It uh, back you say uh, we have very, very the time pressure on it. It's also another challenge because you should always push the develop development development team and to you know to publish a, a new version. And uh, you are reaching the the patients. It's it's very serious. You, you know you are serving uh, a digital healthcare so, so, uh, service, so it's not easy to put. A push a, a you know a new version and to try in the market uh, you should be very careful uh, so it was very really, uh, hard for us uh, this was one of the biggest challenges i can say and the, as a uh, advice maybe i can say the every the corporates and startups should be you know the brave in this kind of uh, the, uh, situations. We were lucky. The Bayer Women Health team was very brave, and uh, you know we put a real example of a good POC in really hard times. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, not being early adapter is not enough. You should be brave. I think. Uh, thank you. I mean, Bishal also mentioned similar things, right? I mean, those kind of things like COVID or any kind of big problems or economic, social, politic changes actually enables us to fully try on innovation. Sometimes they are like toys that people just play around with. But for example, in UK now, like mobile payment is the only thing. I haven't held a cash, I don't know, maybe a year. And there is always QR codes for ordering from table. Yes, we had it in like six years ago as well. And everybody was trying to play around it and still everybody was interested in. But with all of the health concerns, you see that everybody tried it. Now everybody is stuck with it. So I think it will came to came down to telemedicine as well. I think NHS is kind of do, doing similar program with some partners too. So it, it looks really promising. And uh, before closing, I also want to remind people that we have a Q&A, I mean, sorry, on chat, we have a NPS file. So if you want to give us some feedbacks, 
we would be really happy to change the upcoming events accordingly. And my final question is to Barkin, uh, what do you have in the uh, next steps in terms of buyer, this POC with Albert help or anything else? What do you guys think? Um, um, actually, we are already in the next phase with Albert. So um, we have reached this 1000 mark and that was our target for the first phase of the uh, project. Uh, we've provided free of charge telemedicine service to Turkish women, 1,000 Turkish women. And now we have entered into the second phase of the project, which will be uh, uh, also combined with a chatbot. Uh, women's healthcare chatbot is right now built. Uh, and that will be working on both WhatsApp Messenger and Facebook um, in order to help Turkish women with their questions related to birth control or women's healthcare in general, we will ask them to use our chatbot to receive uh, some straightforward answers from approved sources such as World Health Organization or Turkish medical authorities. And in case the question or condition of that unique user is a little bit more complex, we will let them know that our telehealth solution is there to help them. So that will be the second phase. Uh, and right now we're already in it. And after we really develop uh, the final product for chatbot, uh, I think there will be some uh, linked services that will improve the service quality that we give to Turkish women. I mean, this sounds incredible. And I think it will build year by year, project by project, because as you said, some of them are kind of limited by the government's uh, approach as well, which they would want to be risk-free because they are trying to serve 80 million people, likewise buyer as well. So I'm really happy that kind of enabled this kind of cooperation as headquarters. And this is just one of the uh, other POCs that we had. I hope that we can see Sardar in even better places and maybe in the portfolios of great venture capitals. And Barkin, uh, for you again, like I, I really want to thank you because while Bayer is working, a uh, few people like you are trying to push. I mean, for Bayer's case, we have a lot of Barkins in the company, I know. But uh, at the end of the day, you guys also make it happen besides the company. So I'm really grateful for that. If you have anything to add, I would like to uh, close the session right now. Nothing from my side. Yeah, thank you very much again for the event and for the invitation. Hope to talk to next step results maybe in six months time thank you very much for joining us today so let me just share the final page and uh, remind people that thank you Barkin and Sardar for joining us today and also Dr. Christian Weiss and Bishal Dakal all of our friends and thank you for uh, spending your one hour with us talking about health tech and what's going to happen and what should be the way of doing some kind of POCs with big company side and also startup side. And if you can, please uh, give us your feedbacks about the upcoming events. So we will uh, make it much better next time. Until then, uh, I've been Khan and thank you very much for joining us today. Mm -hmm.